Oh, I am so hungry. Is that annoying? No, it's not annoying. I should keep doing it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. It is annoying. Okay, I'm hungry for lunch, so I'm going to see if I can go quickly through this second video, the second page of our practice test. This one is all about telling the difference between rational and irrational numbers and uh, finding clever ways to do that. Now remember, rational simply means that we can have a uh, simple fraction, right? With a whole number, numerator, and denominator. Sometimes that's easy to tell. Like for example, that, easy, that's a rational number. Some of them, not so easy. Let's take a look. Oh my goodness gracious. There's the bell. You are not excused. You're not excused. Here we go. We learned this in class. Uh, if you're not in my class, you'll have to trust me on this. But this one is rational because it's that fraction. Okay, here was a system that we learned is when you're faced with a repeating decimal, you're just going to write the number, take the bar, the vinculum, instead of above, put it below, and then below that, put however many digits are here. There's one. Put that many nines. Okay, so it's three steps. Let's do that again. Write the 27, move the bar, how many spaces? Two spaces, so we write two nines. Yeah. Now you could simplify that, right? Divided by 9, divided by 9, 3 elevenths. Either way, it proves it's a rational number. Now this one's kind of funky, but this ends up being this ends up being 5 6 Okay, and here's a little proof. I don't know if I have room to really prove it to you all the way. But if we say x equals this, and then I go times 10, both sides, that means I get 10x equals this. And then if I say minus x from both sides, What does that really mean? Well, it means 9x equals, and then see that's all that stuff out there. So it ends up being this. And uh, what is 8 and 3 tenths minus that? That's 7 fifths. Oh, there might be room. Then if I divide both sides by 9, I get x equals 7 and a half over 9. But then if I go times 2, I get x equals 15 eighteenths, which, like I told you, simplifies to 5 6. That was a big mess, and if you didn't follow that, don't worry about it. Okay. The proof is if you go on your calculator and you just go 5 divided by 6, you'll get that. That proves it's right. Okay. And of course, this one, luckily, this one's an easy one. This is 107 over 100, right? Because the one represents a one represents a hundred hundredths, right? Okay, sorry, I ran out of room. Let's move on. You got to trust me on this. You know, I could trust the butcher, or <sighs> let's do the ones we know to be true first of all. Any terminating decimal is automatically rational. Okay, any terminating decimal. So that one's good. Pi. Irrational. How do we know? Well, people have all these contests to see who can remember the most decimal places. Why in the world would they do that? Because it never repeats and it never terminates. 
which makes it irrational. Square root of 169, if you get your handy dandy calculator out, or maybe you just know this, is 13. That's the definition of a rational number. Any whole number is a rational number. Okay, let's look at this guy. Oh man, exponents, that's crazy. That has to be irrational, right? But here's the thing. If I cover up the four, is that rational? Is it? Yeah, it is. So if I multiply a rational number times itself, it will still be rational. It will never change. Okay? So there, this gets us back to square root of seven. Not quite sure about this one. So we go in the calculator and we go square root of seven. And we get this. Look at that. That looks like it might be irrational. But wait a minute. Let's go ahead and, because, you know, calculators round things off. We're not sure about this. If you enter all of those digits carefully and then square it, if it equals 7, then this is a rational number. Oh, and it does. So don't be fooled, okay? Because uh, like square root of 2 is not rational. A lot of those square roots of non-perfect squares are irrational. But some of them are rational, such as square root of 7. So be careful. Okay, this one's talking about estimating. Wow, we're almost done with this one already. We're only seven minutes in. <clears throat> estimating, when you see the word estimate, it means don't use the calculator, okay? Biggest mistake people use on these problems? Right, they use a calculator. Okay, here we go. Um, first of all, let's get rid of this one. Negatives don't have roots. There's no such thing as a negative square. They have no roots. So whenever you see something like that, you should actually smile. Okay, we're going to start here. Square root of 15. Well, 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 15 is very close to 16. So I'm going to say this one is about 3.8, 3.9. Three I don't know. We're estimating, right? You could say 3.9 and we're both right because we both have a reasonable estimate. Here we go, square root of 87. 9 squared is 81. 10 squared is 100. It's in between there, but it's closer to 9 squared than it is to 10 squared. So I'm going to guess about 9 point... What should I do? Two. I'll go 9.2. That's reasonable, and if you said 9.3, that's also reasonable. Okay? We can all be friends here. Ah, finally, this makes me think of eights. And nines. Which one is that closer to? Wrong! It's closer to 64. I can't believe you thought... Uh, six, uh, okay, just kidding. It's closer to 64, and you thought that, which means this is very close to 8. Let's go 8.1, okay? I'm going to highlight these answers because, trust me, I know how messy this is. You should see it live right here where I'm sitting. Messy. There's some answers highlighted for you. Well, I got the pretty yellow out. Let's highlight some more. Nice. Finally, uh, here's a little question for you to ponder as we sign off on the second video of the day. How do you know if a number is rational or irrational? How do you know? Well, that would be cool if you left a comment and told me because I'm done and I'm going to eat my lunch now.
Mmm. It says salami on the cover, but there's some chicken in there. There's some salami. Yep. Okay. I'm going to eat now. Thank you so much for watching What's Your Math channel. And uh, stay tuned for more exciting math videos. Goodbye.